Alright, so this is a suggestion via a donation. The name of the video is uh, How a Camel's Bad Habit Can Put You in a Coffin. Let's check it out. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> right, I'll just check the camera, yeah? Okay. Bro. That's right. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> Deserved. Deserved. I am sorry, but I listen, listen, I don't like these people. Right, uh, these people that go to to like Africa specifically to hunt like big game animals and things like that, and then they just take photos next to. It. I hate this, guys. I hate it. Right, and like honestly, I would have felt absolute pride if that that lion would have just demolished this person taking a photo next to another. You, you understand what I'm saying here, guys? Am I wrong for that? Let me know. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong for that. I hate seeing this, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Right, I'll just check the camera, yeah? Okay. That's right. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, run. Run, 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 run. Do that exact thing, run. You know they say an average of 183,671 oh, people are fake. added to God's uh, recently deleted folder every day. Some of those okay. people retired from life in some of the most outrageous ways possible. For example, vending machines and coconuts sell more real estate in cemeteries than the headliner of Jaws. But what if a can of soda was responsible for ending your way of life without you ever even drinking it? Well, Richard Molesky was the owner of the Tula Monkey Sanctuary in Mexico, and yes, a can of carbonated diabetes is why I said was. Chicago-born Molesky was a natural animal lover who worked at the sanctuary for well over a decade, where he would become close with a lot of the animals, but especially a male dromedary camel whose name was never released to the public. And every morning while doing rounds, Richard would greet the hum jockey with a can of Coca-Cola. Like clockwork, Richard would show up and the camel would enjoy his favorite soft drink. Well, one day Molesky didn't have it and from the way the camel reacted, you would think we were talking about a different kind of Coke. The camel proceeded uh -huh. to maul him and even sat on him, which likely suffocated him. It took a rope tied to a pickup truck to pull the steroid llama off of him, but as you can guess, by the time they did, he was... Well, a was. Right. Of course, right. we'll never know exactly what went down because it was between someone who can't talk and someone who won't. But there's a good mm -hmm. chance that Coca coked out. Hey, I tell you right now, that animal got addicted to the sugar and it just became like a thing. That's what it did every single morning. One morning, he didn't have it. You know, he was like, give my stuff. You don't have it? All right, well, you're done out here. That's exactly what just happened. Camel can demand over some sugar water. And I believe it because camels 100% be on that kind of timing. Like they're wow. chill 90% of the time. It's just that 10% where someone ends the day on a newspaper. Like one time in Rajasthan, India, a man was entertaining guests in his home okay. and he realized he parked his camel outside in a brutal 110 degree heat. That's 43 degrees Celsius for the rest of the world. Well, apparently six hours of sun only breeds homicidal intent because as the man tried to untie the camel, the camel suplexed him and slammed him into the ground. The camel then proceeded to divorce the man's head from his body using his teeth. It took about 25 people and several hours just to get the camel to stop ravaging his owner's corpse. That's why you don't beef with something that chews on cactuses like candy. Cause some animals are very much capable of seeking revenge and camels are very much on that list. Which shouldn't really be a surprise since high intelligence means some animals have the capacity to experience every human emotion. Which includes putting the dick in vindictive. Even something like an ant can have as much of a revenge arc as a human. Kidnapping and slavery aren't foreign concepts to ants as some species will regularly yeah, invade the nests of others, slaughter yeah. the workers, and abduct the larvae of the enemy. Listen, th listen, this whole camel talk, bro. That's scary. Alright? Uh, that's absolutely frightening. Like, in a way that I don't understand how that's even a thing. I thought they were, for the most part, extremely docile, except for, like, the bull camels. These captive ants are forced to bring food to their masters, care for the brood. Unless all those incidents were male camel related, like, in heat. And even defend the nest of the very ants that kidnapped them. Well, in many cases, these slave ants grow up and proceed to destroy as many of the colony's babies as possible. Pretty much, they jango a daycare's worth of the pupae of the ants that stole them. In some cases, up to two-thirds of the colony were relieved from life by the former slave ants. It's so like I've always said, if ants had nukes, they'd end the entire world in a weekend. And if they were human-sized, our president would have six legs. And honestly, ant society is just a video of its own. We are talking about an animal that has a species that'll turn itself into a tactical just to stop the ops from succeeding. Ant society is something out of a simulation. And with a game like the Ants Underground Kingdom, you get a chance to experience it firsthand without the added risk of kamikaze yourself. It's actually the world's first ant-themed strategy. Oh, bro, you're good. You're good. You're good. You tricked me into watching a, a sponsorship ad, didn't you? You sure did. You tricked me. You did. And if you another neat prizes. 
Now, if one of those eggs happens to be stolen, it might be lights out meditating and executing acts of revenge. Like you probably already know that crows can remember faces and carry grudges for up to and sometimes over five years. But they'll also pass down their prejudices to their children. So you could really catch a feathery fade over something you did to his crow father. The flip side is that crows also remember those who did right by them. So if I ever happen to get arrested, it'll likely be for using Wendy's fries to weaponize crows. But I'd advise you not to underestimate the carnage that comes with beefing with the black air force of the sky. Once upon a time, a man named Shiva Kawat attempted to save a baby bird he found near his home. Despite his best efforts, the chick didn't make it. And even though his intentions were good, all the neighboring crows saw was a past tense baby crow in his hands and that's when violence was selected. For the next three years, he'd get air jumped every time he left his house by a homicide <laughs> of crows. Like to the point where he has scars and has to travel with a stick to protect that's himself not against funny, the aerial onslaught. Little, so basically, funny. if he would've let that baby crow expire, funny. his quality of life would probably be higher. Expiration of life is the only conclusion when you beef with a buffalo. I'm gonna keep this brief because I've talked about them before, but basically the K buffalo is a 1200 pound John Wick. Not only will injured buffalo literally die trying to drag you down with him. Just like crows, the Cape Buffalo will ride for theirs. In 2020, trophy hunter Claude Clayhunts took down a massive male Cape Buffalo. But as he and his crew started loading the sole evacuated buffalo onto his truck, another buffalo from the same herd pulled up and gored him, in the groin no less, which severed his femoral artery and sealed his fate. There have been reports of these trench cows chasing hunters into trees. Okay. I I'm sorry, bro. I'm, tr I'm trying to feel bad for you. I feel bad that, that another human is being assaulted. Absolutely. But knowing what you did probably like 30 minutes before. Nah. And then camping under the trees, just waiting to cut them from Earth's roster. And like I said, it's not just humans getting hunted. Since Cape Buffalo have been known to Uno reverse lions by waiting for the adults to go off on hunts just so they can turn the unsupervised lion cubs into wet spots. If elephants don't forget, then the Cape Menace doesn't forgive. And you'd be surprised at just how many animals are smart enough to pay you what you're owed. Like, I bet you weren't expecting Octopus to be in a video like this. Well, not roll really. the tape. <laughs> it turns out octopus and some fish will work together bro. to hunt, and the squidwards of the sea will occasionally uppercut their co-workers to keep them from cheating them out of food. It's also believed that the octopi that have been exploited in the past are more trigger-happy with their tentacles. Of course, there's also a good chance that octopi might taste in fish purely out of spite, but punishing someone for someone else's crime technically still counts as revenge. Also, cephalopods can be just as spiteful with each other. Like here, where a female octopus got tired of a male trying to mate with her, so she proceeded to throw silt on his face. And octopus are more than smart enough to aim their malice at people. As researchers will tell you, sometimes <laughs> octopus will purposely take aim and squirt ink at the very scientists studying them. Not only that, but they'll often have specific people that they like to pick on. One octopus in an aquarium in Dorset, England, got into the habit of super soaking anyone who would walk past his tank. Another octopus in a Santa Monica Pier aquarium flooded the place after she disassembled a valve in her tank, sending 200 gallons of water rushing onto the exhibit and office floors. And Otto the octopus flashed his middle finger to humanity when he squirted water on a nearby spotlight, short-circuiting the entire aquarium's electrical system. Workers would fix it in the morning, but since Otto would do it at night when no one was around, it took a while for him to be found out. And of course, there was that time a YouTuber tried to live stream herself eating an octopus, but the only thing he fed mm -hmm. her was an L. So yeah, octopus have the intelligence to be on timing. But at least with them, the worst case is property damage. Eating a live octopus. <sighs> people are savage. Or a suction cup to the face. Things Some get a lot worse when savages. you piss off the next animal. Because tigers are by far the most vengeful animals on the planet. Like, the lengths they'll go to get even is what movies are written about. Like okay. in 1997 when poacher Vladimir Markov shot a tiger and then stole part of its kill. His mistake was leaving the tiger with a pulse. That tiger would get him back, but it wasn't in the heat of passion like the camel. Nah, this jaw was premeditated. The tiger would stake out Markov's cabin and destroy anything that had the hunter's scent on it. About a day or two later, Markov would return to his cabin where he would be ambushed by the same big cat. That story ended around the same time Markov did, after he was dragged into the bushes and never came out. In another story, a poacher named Baby got put in the dirt by a male tiger in March of 2016. Why is that date important? Well, only a month before, he had murked the female tiger in the same area, leading oh, many to believe man. that the tiger that packed him up was actually the mate of the cat he had probably, killed. And if probably. you need more proof that a tiger taking a personal leads to cuts on the census, the tigress at Champawat literally subtracted 436 people after one hunter severely injured her. But don't think these stories only happen in Asia. On Christmas Day 2007 in the San Francisco Zoo, three men effed around and two found out. As for the third, well, you can't get a yeah. life lesson if you don't have a life. The three men oh. had decided to taunt Tatiana, a 400-pound female Siberian tiger. Well, they learned two things that day. One is that a motivated tiger can jump well over 12 feet. And two, the 12 and a half foot moat wall wasn't to keep the tiger in, but to keep people out. 
because apparently out was always an option for Tatiana, who Super Mario jumped out of the enclosure and put the beats on all three men, maiming two of them Visitors. and turning the third into a chalk outline. So yeah, a wild tiger might be the last animal you want to find out with in India, but a close second might be monkeys. Especially since monkeys and dogs have seemingly gone to war against each other. War is debatable because allegedly the monkeys massacred the dog. Listen, the fact that someone lost their life at a zoo, that... Uh, that's scary, right? Um, I know my uh, my son wants to go to a zoo soon, and I'm just like, I don't know if I went to the zoo. After watching all these videos, guys, I don't, I don't think I... I honestly don't think I want to do any type of zoo. Um, but the fact that it happened, that this mauling, for the most part, happened at a zoo... Um, like, what happens to the victim's family? Like, is it the victim's fault? It can't be, because they paid to come into this and they expected the security. But you also shouldn't just be out here taunting animals. Dogs. According to Zoom. residents, some monkeys even took to snatching puppies, carrying them up to a roof, and then letting gravity catch the body. And if you believe this story, then you believe that this all started after a pack of stray dogs mauled a baby monkey and the monkey mafia took it very personal. But we actually don't know for sure what caused this mass puppy homicide. Primates will often feed on the ticks living on animals of different species. So it's possible the monkeys weren't trying to get revenge, but were only after the ticks on the dog's fur. But there's also a chance that Cloudy with a chance of puppy was 100% intentional. Especially since that seems to be a signature move for them. Earlier this year in India, a troop of monkeys jumped a family and snatched their four-month-old son, who they proceeded to throw off a three-story building. In a separate attack, monkeys broke into a home and dragged away a two-month-old oh who had been sleeping God. next to his grandfather. The same monkeys ended up drowning him in a water tank. Yeah, monkeys can be malicious when they want to be, but anyone in Japan will tell you that. Cause right Bro, I saw that video and I did not, I did not yeah, understand why until now. Until now, like literally right now. Be malicious when they want to. And that video was crazy. I don't know, like, bro, why are you not getting up and stopping this happening? And instead, you're just allowing your, your child to be dragged across the ground by a monkey. But anyone in Japan will tell you that. Because right now, the chasing. Japanese city is currently under attack by a gang of Japanese macaques. Since July, nearly 60 people have been attacked and injured in the city of Yamaguchi, and the monkeys tend to go after babies, small children, and the elderly, you know, the light work of the population. And the thing is, the traps they set aren't working because the monkeys don't seem to be after food. They're just doing it. And yeah, while this could be a coincidence, there's also a good chance this is revenge. See, monkeys and really primates in general have a sense of fairness and will lash out when they feel like they've been wronged. In experiments with Capuchin teeth, monkeys, bro. scientists found that when given unequal portions of food, the monkeys would seem to target and punish the individual that got the unfair share. It actually makes sense for a social animal to actively discourage inequity in the group. But when a monkey feels cheated, it becomes a much more dangerous monkey. In another experiment, one capuchin was given a grape while another was given a cucumber. Despite previously being happy with the cucumber, the monkey seemed to get offended when he saw his peer get a grape and refused to take the cucumber. He even started to become aggressive with his handlers, so yeah, primates don't like feeling slighted. If you don't believe me, jealousy and a birthday cake got this man mutilated by a pair of chimps. So I can't tell you exactly what started the monkey war in Japan, but I, I can tell story, you they probably guys. have a reason. Speaking of reason, yeah, I, I kind of had to talk about Elephant. that. So you probably know the story, but okay. recap. An elephant traveled over 100 miles from a sanctuary and trampled a 70-year-old woman collecting water. Only for that same elephant to show up to her funeral and further desecrate her corpse, this time oh. in front of her entire grieving family. Oh, now, no. I know I say this a lot on this channel, it's become one of my popular phrases, but this time someone literally got turned into a hashtag. Now, a lot of people have claimed that this woman was involved in poaching and this was just the elephant playing equalizer. I don't want to say that because we don't know for sure and there's a good chance the woman was just at a worse place at an even worse time for the elephant to show up and turn her into a trend. But yeah. here's what we do know. Asian Elephants often come into close contact with people, especially farmers, and conflicts often get them injured or put on a shirt. We know Asian elephants often get exploited for logging, entertainment, and poaching, so they have a reason to hate anything human. Yeah, and anything we know an oriented. elephant doesn't forget. We're and it wasn't too to long them. ago when an elephant in Thailand ripped a grown man in half and stood over the sole evacuated body for hours after that same man forced him to haul logs in the intense heat. So we know elephants ain't quick to forgive either. So with this story, we'll never know for sure if there was cause or coincidence, but let me put it this way. A hundred miles and a guest appearance at a funeral is one hell of a coincidence. But that's gonna do it for this video. For more consistent content, be sure to follow my TikTok and Instagram. I try to post daily on both. And to watch videos before I post them, kindly consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Also be sure to check out my book, 100 Animals That Can Effing End You. The title kind of speaks for itself. But other than that, drink <laughs> water, hug your mother, and, and you know what? Actually, your father too. He might not say, but he'll Thank you. you. Don't cross an elephant because he might just traumatize your entire family. And yeah, I'll hug see the you father too. Go for it. All right, here's the thing. Um, I can definitely tell you that I've never in my life encountered any type of like camel that was any that was anywhere near similar to to what was going on in the first uh, section, at least, right? Um, but I have consumed a camel. Um, 
you know, in, in a very hmm, tribal manner, let's say, right? Um, so I have consumed it where they dispatched it and it was a wild scene. Imagine, you know, seeing that in person. That's a lot of that red viscous fluid everywhere, just to say the least. Um, I don't want to get too gory, but but yeah, like I've never seen a camel act like that. Um, never. And I never want to see a camel act like the way they were acting. Uh, I feel like there has to most likely be some type of videos um, showing me what he very specifically didn't. Right. I don't know if I actually want to be damaged mentally today, but um, yeah, I, 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 I need to see this guys because I don't understand it. It's like the idea of a horse doing this. I don't get it, guys. Either way, listen, uh, let me know in the comments of the next one of these from him that I should be checking out, and I will get to that as soon as I possibly can, all right? And uh, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy it thoroughly.